that's a that's an interesting question. So it's so fun because I mean I get to do it all the time. I get to do one of these things. It was something that I thought we had that didn't exist. <laughs> you know, and I'm still waiting for it. I'm trying to remember myself at 10 year old and what I thought of rock concerts. Um, <laughs> When I was 10 years old, I mean, like, we didn't even have computers. <laughs> we had, like, a Commodore 64. That's 64K, okay? Not even a megabyte. So you read these books, you know, from the you know, library, and I was convinced that physicists and scientists had invented some magic crystal that was a radio. And I thought they were growing radios. And so, awesome. yeah, yeah, so I was totally confused. And I was very disappointed that later on, when I learned more, to realize that they don't exist. What they were talking about was probably like integrated circuits. All they were doing was making little versions of those big things that I was thinking. They all had parts in them, stuff like that. You're like, well, that's easy. Yeah, I right, that. right, I was that in my basement, right? That's what my greatest, my first great disappointment in solid state physics, that there wasn't any magic crystal that was a, you know, you look in one side and there was a TV coming out the other, you know, a picture of somebody coming out the other side. It was, it was very bitterly disappointing. When we finally have that in Best Buy, then I'll, my life will be full. Your life will be complete. Yeah, right. I think if you showed someone like me an iPhone or, or some kind of, you know, a computer that you can hold in your hand and can do all this stuff, I mean, it's just night and day. I was an undergrad and we were just learning about spreadsheets as the new thing. Wow. Did you see people were plotting things on graph paper? I don't know the last time I plotted something mm -hmm. on graph paper. Of course not, it's like ridiculous. <laughs> like nowadays you, a, a kindergartner can plot a log, log plot. You know, it's like just a click of a button. You know, when I was a graduate student, I think I was the last person in the lab to use a fast film camera. I was looking at droplet breakup. So these are like you have a nozzle and then you have a little drop breaking from a faucet. Okay. And it was a very fast process, so you wanted to capture it on film. So we would load 160 feet of feet of film into like the back of a camera, and then you'd sit there with your little switch, <laughs> and you'd wait for the drop to go, and right at the last second, click. Then you send it to the lab for development. We get Two weeks. Gotta send it out. Two weeks later, we get the result, and we're like, "Oh crap, we missed the drop." You know, like it's like a disaster. It was a total disaster. <laughs> Nowadays, you know, like we have automated video cameras. You just, you know, click the trigger. You didn't get it. You just do the experiment again. The mosh pits would have to be on the list. I mean, it's it's not something I've devoted my career to. Uh, it's something that grew out of my my two students who were who were excited about thinking about how to apply laws that has been developed by physicists to study how, how people in uh, heavy metal concerts uh, bash into one another in the mosh pits. I, I remember being very skeptical about, about things like loud music and, and, and things at 10 though, so I'm not sure he would have gone for it, but broadly speaking, it's got to be something that a 10 year old could appreciate. <laughs> that, that, uh, the, the, the science of maniacs uh, 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 who have had a lot to drink. I'm going to give a, a, a strange answer. I think the answer is I, I would be shocked to learn that we hadn't gone to Mars. It's what we did yeah, do yeah. that was as surprising as what we did. During their journey to the moon, there was intense national interest in mm -hmm. that program. And then I, I didn't live through it, but I feel like there was kind of a drop off in interest. And now with the Mars rover, maybe people are starting to get interested again. How do you view the situation? Oh, sure. I mean, that's, I think you, you said it best. You know, it's something that's new and adventurous. Once you've done it a couple times, it's no, no fun anymore. <laughs> just not to watch on TV. Who wants to go to the moon? I mean, yeah, really. <laughs> it was also just, it's much harder to go to Mars than to go to the, go to the moon. And I have to say that the thing that's, that got me excited now is there are these crazy people who are thinking about one-way trips to Mars. So they, they put you in a rocket and they shoot you to Mars and with enough stuff to start a civilization. <laughs> and I think that's a really interesting idea yeah. that probably won't end well the first couple of times. But it, that has that sort of, you know, same kind of emotional juice in it that, that yeah. going to the moon. There's something admirable about that fatalistic view. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> really, really, you're putting it on the line there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. This whole idea of being able to print tissues or roll tissues, you know, I think like most kids who grow up to be engineers, I had a pretty vivid imagination when I was a kid, and that's the kind of thing that I could never even imagine. And you say 10, but I mean, this is something that really applies to 15 or 20 or 21, even when I graduated from college. You know, if you had said, you know, you're going to have a career where you've 
you know, help to make this printer that can print living tissue, it would have sounded like complete science fiction. And the funny thing is, is I look and, and it's exactly the opposite for my kids. My kids are growing up in a world where this is just de rigueur. Like, well, like it's of just, course. of course, of course. Why like that, you print a Daddy does here? that all the time. I mean, of course you can print stuff like that. The analogy that I've heard is that 3D printing technology is kind of where personal computing technology was in the late 70s. Okay. Right, where you used to be able to, at that time, it was this small group of uh, devotees who would buy kits to make computers right, you know, that they right. would use in their garage, right? And that's kind of where we are now in 3D printing, right? That you can, you can go and buy a kit for about $1,000 and put together your own 3D printer. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't take much imagination to think that in 10 years that you're going to be able to buy that 3D printer at Best Buy for, you know, $100 or $200. Pretty cool future. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I'm jealous.